and ready, and we're given information. It's going to be eight steps, so buckle down. Oh, man. What did you do? And you can mark in as you go on your picture that may be with congruent CD. A Y congruent BX and BX. My goal is to eventually prove that angle Y is congruent to angle X. Now, maybe to think backwards, before we prove that these two angles are congruent, what are we going to have to prove? The triangles are congruent. The triangles are congruent. Before we prove the triangles are congruent, we're going to have to show that these two triangles are congruent by side or side side side. How many sides do I have right now? Three. Two. Two, two technically, but I have a little extra piece of information that I have two sides for sure. So I'm going to make it my first goal to show that AC right here is congruent to BD. So that's kind of goal number one. If I could just show that AC is congruent to BD, then I would be able to say the triangles are congruent. Then I would be able to say that the angles are congruent. What's my very last reason going to be? CPCQC. CPCQC. Okay, so let's go to work on making, to see if we can say that AC is congruent to BD. Everyone's favorite step? Definition of congruence. Yeah. I know, that's, that's real life excitement. So you're going to basically repeat the first line, but without the bars and without the congruent symbol. ahead of time that we're going to have to use segment addition postulates and when we start adding segments together we like talking about their length we don't like talking about congruence as much so let's talk about segment addition here. <coughs> remember our goal is to talk about AC and BD so let's think about AC it's made up of two parts what two parts a B and BC. Let's talk about BD. It's made up of two parts. What two parts? Oh. Um, DC plus CB. DC and CB. Segment addition Now, notice they both have a BC. Eventually, I'm going to have it where they're on each side of the equation and I subtract it out. But I got to do something first. This is probably the hardest thing to see in the proof. But I have BC in both of them. One of them has AB, one of them has CB. But if you look up previously in the proof, AB and CB are the same thing, same length. So I can interchangeably use A, B, and C, B. So instead of writing A, B, I'm going to write C, B. So then they're saying the exact same thing. So I'm going to rewrite step three, but instead of writing A, B, I'm going to write C, B. They're interchangeable, so I can do that.
Now, if they're equal to the same thing, I can set them equal to each other, which is what I want to do. Let me say that again. If they're equal to the same thing, I can say that they're equal to each other. So AC is equal to BD. I found that they're equal to the same thing. Or if you want to think about it, instead of writing CD plus BC, I'm going to substitute in BD. Instead of writing CD plus BC, I'm going to write in BD. That's another substitution. Very similar to the double substitution process that we did for another proof. Have I completed my first goal that I want to accomplish? Mm. Yes. yes. Then yes. No. 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 Oh, definition of congruence. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> I love this step. This is why they pay me the big bucks. Definition of congruence. Oh, yeah. Big bucks. Oh, big, 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 I've accomplished my first goal, which was showing that AC is congruent to BD. But why was I even trying to do that in the first place? What's yeah. next? You can say that triangles are congruent. Triangles are congruent. So, this is side, side, side. And I'm going to do it DX. D, so two swipe, three swipe, triangle DXB is congruent to triangle two swipe, three swipe, AYC. After I've shown that the triangles are congruent, go ahead and say that y is congruent to x because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are. 